Hi, I'm Alex Ferrari. I'm Sebastian Tordas. Thank you for uh, joining us. And we're here with Jason Michael Berman. Hi, good morning. Good morning. morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Friend Alex. of mine. Sebastian, thank you. Oh, thank you're you welcome. Com- Thanks for coming, man. Thanks for Excited. having me. Uh, Jason's a producer. You've had quite a few films, actually, uh, recently at all the festivals, uh, but particularly here at Sundance, which is where we are. Yep. Which is a uh, shining light. Uh, <laughs> it, I, I will, it has been really great this year because uh, this is my, I think, my 14th or 15th consecutive Sundance. I've been wow. coming since... Uh, 2003, when I was a sophomore at USC. I was going to say, you were coming before you so, had movies here. So Yeah, exactly. So I don't know if that's 14 or 15 years, but it was right. since 2003. And uh, the, my, 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 I remember my first like five to seven years at Sundance, it just used to snow a lot. And I just remember lots of snow in Park City. Right, and I right. felt like for the last four or five years, there's yeah. kind of just been a snow drought here. There hasn't yes. been as much. And I'm also an avid skier, so I keep track of you know how much snow falls in different places. But... Uh, it's been awesome because I think they've had close to 30 inches uh, in the last 48 hours. Yeah, at least, uh, it's insane. Uh, up in Deer Valley on the mountains. So this has been awesome. It definitely makes the atmosphere of the festival a lot, a lot more festive. It's more, su- more Sundancey. It's more Sundancey, exactly. <laughs> so what, what's your experience? I mean, you've had uh, multiple films here. Yeah. Um, Breath of a Nation, um, this year's Burning Sands, and then LUV. What's your experience here, like having the film at Sundance? And what was it like getting the first phone call? Yeah, de- definitely. So I mean, I uh, so I, as I said, I started coming in two thousand three, um, and uh, I after uh, that was while I was in school. I graduated from USC School of Cinematic Arts in two thousand six. Did the assistant thing for three years. Um, my first year actually uh, coming to Sundance as like a you know working in the industry was actually um, in two thousand uh, seven with the William Morris Agency. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, at the time, I was uh, working for Rena Watson and Cassie and Elways. So that oh, was well, really they're famous because experience. they're famous indie uh, exactly. agents, actually. They really pioneered the packaging and sales uh, uh, kind of divisions within the agencies. And William Morris Agency, I think, was the first one to really have the largest department. So, Cassie and? Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. So that was that was a lot of fun. Um, then went and did two other jobs and then, uh, and then produced my first feature film in 2009, which was called The Dry Land, mm-hmm. uh, which I had produced with a guy by the name of Ryan Pier- was Piers Williams. He was the writer-director. Um, I produced for him. I produced his thesis film at USC. And, uh, and that film got into competition um, at Sundance in 2010. How was and it getting it, that call? It, it, it was amazing. And <laughs> Ryan, obviously, they called the director. And then Ryan called me. Mm-hmm. And I was just blown away. I was blown away because literally it had been three long years of being an assistant and I was thinking, should I go to law school? Um, <laughs> I was actually applying to law school at that time right. and I'll never forget, he called a couple days before Thanksgiving and told me that uh, the dry land got into Sundance and I think we were some of the youngest filmmakers at a filming competition nice. um, and it was, uh, it was amazing. So that film premiered in January 2010 here. That was my first film and it was a competition film and and literally having that film at Sundance launched my producing career, my professional producing career. Um, and, uh, and from that point on, just uh, at, from that point on up until, I guess, 2017, I'm going to be going into production on my 21st feature film. Nice. Um, and uh, and are, you even year, huh? are you even 30 yet? Huh? Are you even 30? 34. Oh, okay. 34. Oh, you're older than I thought, but that's pretty... But, this is my fifth film at Sundance. So the first one was The Dry Land, which was in 2010. The second film was called Jess and Moss, which was in 2011. The third film was called Love, which was in 2012, which Jeez. was actually the first film that I had ever been attached to produce before Jess and Moss mm-hmm. and The Dry Land. And that was actually uh, written by uh, uh, Sheldon Candace and Justin Wilson, who are, uh, I met through USC and directed by Sheldon. Um, and then uh, let's see. That was that, so. That was 2013. I did not have a film. My films got rejected Slacking. from Just the slack. festival. Oh, they got they rejected. Uh, they got you. rejected. Um, 2014. I had um, a film called uh, Little Accidents. Uh, 2015. Did not. Uh, my film got rejected from the film festival. So even after and 2016 you... was Birth of a Na- was uh, was uh, Birth of a Nation, which was the largest sale at Sundance ever. at the time. Largest sale at Sundance ever, and I think hopefully we'll hold on to that for for a bit. And then 2017 here with Burning Sands. So so even though you have a hell of a track fun. record, yeah, it's not a guarantee. No, it's not a guarantee. And I mean, yeah, you know, and, and obviously over the course of over the course of the years you have filmed here, you get to really build relationships with. Mm-hmm. With uh, you know, with people at the festival, but it's all—I mean, it's all about the quality of the work. And so I have had, 
Um, you know, I've had plenty of feature films that have been re- rejected from Sundance, probably five, mm-hmm. as many as I've had that have gotten in. And um, I've actually, and still to this date, I'm now like, I've, I've started helping executive produce uh, some of my friend's short films. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've actually never gotten a short film into the Sundance <laughs> Film Festival. I've had plenty of those rejected. And that goes back you also to, haven't uh, done a documentary yet, I don't think. And I haven't had a documentary, but I think this year I'm going to be producing my first documentary, which I'm excited about. Very cool. Um, so it's been great. Yeah, I mean it's it's uh it's been it's been an awesome awesome experience having having I have a here. question for you. Um you know there are a lot of filmmakers who uh say that they don't want to come to Sundance until they have their movie here. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. What do you think of that? I totally disagree with that. Agreed, um yeah. I will tell you that the years that the 2013 and 2015 which were the two years that I had not had films here um in between having films here were some of the most productive years. They were the years that I got to go see the most amount of films. They were the years that I got to do, got to do the most amount of networking with different filmmakers, meet a lot more of the Sundance Labs filmmakers that had just come out of the screenwriting labs. Mm -hmm. And so they were actually some of the most productive years. And then the years that I came to Sundance prior to 2010, when I was just coming here, you know, as a, as either a student or as an assistant working in the industry, it was also extremely valuable because it actually really built up my passion and love for independent film. And I got to uh, just, you know, continue to meet a lot of different people and see how the, you know, just kind of see how the festival worked and, and, you know, learn the landscape of Sundance. And, um, and so I think that coming to Sundance uh, either without having a film um, before your first film here or after you get films in, but then maybe a year you don't get a film in, it is unbelievably valuable, in my opinion, to come back. Because um, you have the time to do stuff. You have the time to do stuff, yeah. And exactly. when you have a film, you're just... When you have a film, you're focusing on dealing with your actors, with your filmmakers, with logistics. Um, Doing interviews. Know, different <laughs> press things, interviews. So it's it's definitely, you don't have as much time to see to see movies. Um, and I literally have never missed, I mean, have not missed Sundance for one year since 2003. So, so that, you've seen it grow. That, that says something. Yeah, I've seen it change. And I know that even like, you know, people that came here in the early 90s, it was a huge difference in 2003 from the early 90s. Right. Um, but yeah, it's obviously definitely changed since 2003. Now, what was it that got you started? Like, what did you, why did you want to jump into the, to the crazy business of filmmaking? Um, well, I, so I, I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, um, a mecca for film, obviously. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, obviously the home of Barry Levinson and John Waters. Hey, hey, hey. Um, you never know. They might get some tax credits. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we did. We did. I, we, I shot a couple of movies in Baltimore. And, right. and, uh, and sometimes they have, you know, they depending on how many TV series are shooting, they mm-hmm. do have tax benefits sure, for independent sure, sure. films. Um, but uh, I actually, I grew up, uh, I, I think a lot of it actually kind of stems back to the fact that I grew up dyslexic. And mm-hmm. so I had a hard time learning to read and write when I was young. And, uh, and I resorted to watching movies um, because that was you know, a form of escapism, but it was also a really great way to learn. And that then translated itself into wanting to be you know, an actor. So I did a lot of acting between the ages of like seven and 13. And then by the time I was you know, 13, I started getting a lot more fascinated by what was happening behind the camera. And so I started utilizing my mom's video camera a lot. Mm-hmm. And then instead of directing like my friends in little stage plays or myself, I started, you know, directing things that were, you know, filmed on video. And uh, that was where my passion for, for film and video started. And then um, I went to a great school that was solely for dyslexics in Baltimore called the Genesee School. Uh, they allowed me at a very young age to start a video program there, and we got Sony Corporation of America uh, to donate equipment to the school. And so we started a video club, and then that then led to when I went to the French School of Baltimore, which is a really great high school in Baltimore. We started a film and video program there. And, uh, and then I knew by 10th grade I wanted to either go to USC or NYU. Mm-hmm. Um, and I uh, got into USC and, and, and went, to, went to USC. And so that, and when I literally, I got into school. I did not realize that everything that I had been doing in high school and middle school, I thought it was directing. Mm-hmm. But what I really realized when I got into film school what, was what I had actually been doing was producing. I was organizing. That was where my talent was in. It was putting things together, pushing projects forward, finding talented people to collaborate with. And literally, within the end, by the end of my first semester freshman year at USC, I knew that I was a producer, that I wasn't the writer-director that I thought I was going into the program. And so I spent the next you know, uh, three and a half years after that, that, that first semester freshman year, literally producing 
undergrad and graduate level thesis films as an undergrad student. And right when you got out, you actually started a company um, to called Film Forward, Film right? Film Forward, yeah. yeah. So me and my colleague, Mike Jensen, who I went to school with, started a... Uh, started an initiative, uh, which was also a company called Film Forward, which had a relationship with the film school, and it was meant to help launch, you know, uh, film uh, filmmakers and their and their first feature independent films under a million dollars when they graduated. And uh, it was a little ambitious for us at the time, I think. And it was also we were raising the money when the whole stock market collapsed. It was like two thousand seven, <laughs> two thousand eight. But the one movie that did come out of Film Forward was the first film that I or was. The third film I had at Sundance, which was which was Love, um, nice. and uh, and that was a film full. Well, there's production. there's two things on that I actually wanted to mention. One, you're super entrepreneurial. I mean that that's a huge thing. Mm-hmm. I think most uh, filmmakers aren't. Right. I, I mean, as much as I know you, you've 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 really gone into that. So I, I kind of wanted to hear a little bit more about that. And then I, I had one other thing I wanted to ask you about, which was um, we both actually teach at USC, and one of my the things I talk about the most is how and it's not pertinent just to USC. Um, that comes up a lot because I'm there and you're there, but, but the importance of actually helping your friends in the yeah. business as opposed to going it alone. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I would say one of my best skill sets is, 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 is like keeping relationships going and following up with people and then connecting people with other people that I think that can kind of help them accomplish you know, their dreams and goals, and if that's myself or somebody else. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the relationship side of things has been crucial. I mean, a lot of the directors me. for your um, movies came out of SC and, and writers and everything. that I've worked with have come out of USC. I've produced for a lot of students that I've gone to school with. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so USC was obviously, you know, USC was great um, in terms of obviously we had great teachers, but also um, you're working with just really like-minded, incredibly talented people that you forge relationships with that you'll then work with for the rest of your career. And I am somebody who just loves working with like young people. Like I'm still young myself, <laughs> but I love working with with uh, I love mentoring and I love advising to people that are just starting out because I felt like I had such great mentors and teachers throughout my middle school, high school, and college experience that that's kind of just ingrained in me. And people are like, when are you going to stop you know, producing first-time future director movies? <laughs> and I'm at a company now where it's like I need to make bigger films, obviously, but it's, I still have this passion that each year I still want to do a couple of these you know, first-time feature director movies and work with filmmakers that are either coming out of USC or out of like the Sundance Labs. And that really inspired me to eventually go and teach at USC. And mm-hmm. so... As Sebastian mentioned, I started a class with uh, Mike Jensen, who I went to school with, called Entrepreneurship and Entertainment. We've been teaching it there for it is. four years. Entrepreneur. Yep. It's uh, it's literally about it, it is it, the, the whole class. The theme that runs throughout the entire class in all fifteen weeks um, is how you need to be entrepreneurial to be able to succeed. Oh, at this point In the entertainment industry, which is you too, and, in the, yeah, the yeah, hustle. I mean, it's all about the it's, it's well, it's hustle, hustle, but it's also just actually just doing that work and right. getting things understanding started, understanding revenue streams, understanding what yes. to do and how to sell it, well, figuring sell. out how to put the pieces of the puzzle together in maybe a non-traditional, uh, non-linear way, right? You know, and then and and how you connect things, and and when and then realizing that every person that you meet. Uh, you know, there may be a mutually beneficial relationship there where you can help them get something accomplished and they can help you get something accomplished. And where may they come into this to this particular position and what on a project that you're trying to put together. Mm-hmm. And um, and so we teach this class and it's been it's been amazing. Awesome. I mean it's been one of the, the greatest, I would say, joys of of my career is is teaching. Now one last question. Um, what advice would you give to a filmmaker just starting out? Um, I think it's, it is, it's literally putting yourself out there. It's putting yourself out there and it's being entrepreneurial. Um, you've got to, you can be the most unbelievably talented and creative person, but if you don't take on, if you don't take opportunities and put yourself out there, then it's just, it's, it's, it's hard to, to get known and it's hard to make things happen. Um, and you know, and that goes with being entrepreneurial as well. You've got to just, you've got to think outside the box. It's always about thinking outside the box. Um, I uh, was the one who organized all of my friends coming to Sundance when I was in film school, you know, back, I don't know, 14, 13, 12, 13 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, this past year, um, in my class, I had about, out of the 35 students that I had in my class at USC, about, I think about half of them are coming and participating in the Sundance Ignite program, which is for 18 to 24 year olds, um, and have the Ignite ticket package. And, 
Uh, and that was because I pushed them. And I think, and I, and by the speakers that I brought in, and and by kind of explaining what the value is of coming here and meeting people, um, they came. And so they're all coming tomorrow. I think, That's actually. awesome. And That's awesome. Them had to come the first weekend because they were directing a film the second weekend, but. It's uh, that, that's my advice. Be entrepreneurial and put yourself out there and really take on opportunities that, you know, the different nonprofit organizations within the industry. You know, offer. Sheldon Candace, who directed L LUV, some people call it love. I'm not sure. Is it LUV or love? Love. love. Yeah, it's loving Uncle Vernon. Yes. I, I, he said one of the, 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 the best quotes I've ever heard, and he's the director, also the co-writer, along with Justin Wilson. Um, he said, no is only no for now. Right. Which That's I just great. Love, That's great, love that great line. Yes. No is only no for now. Or no backwards is on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that one. I'm gonna steal that one. That was really good. <laughs> but that Sheldon, yes, I love that. That's a great. That's a great. Saying. One of the ones I always use that I got from a producer friend of mine was show business. The word business has twice as many letters as the word show. Yeah. And there's a reason. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's very true. And last question: What's your one of your favorite films? Um, I would say my favorite films growing up were probably. Um, uh, you know, movies like Good Will Hunting, Dead Poet Society, E.T., Jurassic Park. Um, so it was really, I, I would say again for me, uh, and if I look through the, the themes of the films that I've produced to date, uh, all of them have some type of coming of age component. It's really interesting. Like even the film that I did with, with Richard Gere, which was called The Benefactor, that was a man mm -hmm. coming of age in his 60s. You know, mm -hmm. the, the Birth of a Nation, that's, you know, that's Nat Turner coming into his own. The film that we have here, Burning Sands, that's our lead character, Zurich, you know, coming of age in, uh, in, in college. Um, same with The Dry Land. I mean, everything is, so, so I would say the coming of age component is linked to films like Dead Poet Society, Good Will Hunting, Mr. Holland's Opus, those types of movies that were very inspirational, but also had those coming of age components. And so even in films that I do now, maybe they're not full on dramas or they're not full on inspirational films, but there's that coming of age theme throughout all of them. And then, then there were the films that I just would love watching for escapism, Apollo 13, E.T., Jurassic Park. And mm -hmm. you know, now that I've I think, you know, I've, I've built up a name for myself within the independent film world. I now want to start going into, obviously, larger films while still, you know, making independent films, but having, but starting to be able to make films where people can just really escape into a world that they're not fully familiar with, that they're also going to learn something from. And, uh, and I think that when I mentioned those films that I just did, you can see that, that those are, those are perfect examples about learning about an environment, mm -hmm. but also within being able to escape your day-to-day -day life. Very cool. Um, Jason, thank you. I know you're on you're a yeah. very tight schedule, so thank you for uh, doing course. this for us. We yeah, no, it. this was a lot of fun. Thanks Great. for having me. Thank Thanks. you, Jason. Thank of you so course. much. Thanks, brother. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate you. Huh?